Hello everyone, this is GM Josh Fidel, and today I'm pro I'm going to be covering uh, another video on time travel. Um, so, um, in the previous videos I showed a lot of what it was when, um, like it was mainly the opponent in time trouble. Um, in this case, however, it really is like completely mutual. Um, in other games it was, my opponent was in quite a bit more severe time trouble. Um, than I was. In this game, it was very close. So it's a little bit of a different uh, scenario. Um, because if you think about it, I mean, if you're both in time trouble, I mean, you're both sort of going for the same things. You're both trying to be able to play good practical moves fairly fast. Um, if you complicate the position, it does the same thing for your opponent it does for you. Um, so uh, in a lot of ways, I actually think it gives you more freedom because your opponent is in the exact same situation. Um, if your opponent's in a different situation than you, often you adjust your play just maybe a little bit um, in order to compensate. Like, for example, if you're not in time trouble, your opponent is complicating the position, you might go out of your way to do it a little bit more than you would otherwise. Um, if you're in time trouble and your opponent's not, you really welcome forcing variations, you probably don't want to make things too complicated, etc. When you're both in time trouble, you pretty much do what you'd normally do. I mean, you want to be able to play your moves quickly. Um, but other than that, not too much. So, this is around move 25. Um, oops, um, so, you know, it's kind of a funny position. Uh, the opening I wasn't happy with, but then I thought around here I was picking up an advantage. And he just played the move rook e8 to g8. And uh, at this point, we both have, like, a reasonable amount of time. I mean, not a ton. Maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And, um, and uh, the funny thing <coughs> about this position is that, um, you know, it looks like Black's, like, really tied. Like, he's tied to the D-pawn. My bishop pins, his, pins the D-pawn to the rook. I can sack on E5 in a lot of cases. Here, it's not particularly good. Um, but, uh, but then I noticed, I mean, how do I improve? It's very, very difficult to improve my position. So after thinking for a little while, and again, you, you really don't want to use up all your time on one thing. Uh, for the most part, that's a very bad idea. Even if it's a very important move, chances are there will be other important moves, and you're not going to have any time for this. So I thought for maybe five minutes, then I forced myself to play a move. And uh, I did, basically didn't find anything forcing. Like moves like queen f7 just ran into rook f8. I mean, what am I really going to do? So I decided, okay, you know, maybe I can't do a lot, but I'll slightly improve. I'll play rookie 2. So this move does a couple things. It often threatens to double, and it also keeps his queen out of f2, which I think is very important. We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.